happy birthday. Oh, and uh, from me as well. Feliz aniversário. Beijos, beijos, beijos. In honor of your natal day, I'm going through magazines double fisted on Operation Thunderbolt. I, I hope we get to meet each other again. Cumpleaños feliz. Hope you have a fucking fantastic day. We love you, man. Happy birthday, Uncle James. Happy birthday. I look up to you. A birthday suit and a birthday toot. To James. Happy birthday, James. I love you, man. I'll be in lots and lots of cake. I want to smoke the cigar in your honor. Hey, James. Happy birthday. Here's to more years of more crazy. If you think that's bad, you should see my underwear. I hope you get a really delicious pokey bowl. Thanks for, uh, you know, making my dreams come true. I hope you have a great day. I'm very surprised you're still celebrating things like this, given your age. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my new Suicide Squad first look teaser breakdown. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up with DC Fandom as well. They'll be dropping a bunch of big DC trailers, so be sure to subscribe to get all those videos. Of course, I'll be doing videos for all that stuff. What they're doing in this is just showing off all the main characters, confirming John Cena as well. I know there have been a bunch of jokes about him being in the previous teasers, but you just can't see him because he's John Cena. So I'll explain what's going on with this. They also teased a really big rock steady Superman teaser with Suicide Squad in his head here. I'll explain what's going on with that too. I'll start with the Suicide Squad movie stuff, then I'll talk about that Superman teaser at the end of the video. Since this teaser is all about just showing off the main characters and hyping up the big DC fandom panel, I'll explain who these characters are. Some of them we know a little bit more about than others. There's still a couple mystery characters. I'll also explain where this new movie fits in the timeline and how it's connected to the first Suicide Squad movie because it's not a full-blown reboot, but they are sort of reimagining what the Suicide Squad movies look like through James Gunn. That's why they're calling the movie The Suicide Squad and not Suicide Squad 2. This is the official logo of the movie. They don't include all the big characters in this teaser, but this is most of the main cast of the film. There are a bunch of other side characters too and a bunch of big comic book Easter eggs. Like Peter Capaldi is in the movie as a mystery character. Everybody thought that he was Mr. Freeze, but because of what Matt Reeves is doing with the new Batman trilogy with Robert Pattinson, I think there are a couple big Batman villains that are off limits, so I'll talk about that during the video. You see Harley Quinn herself open the video. This is meant to take place after the events of the Birds of Prey movie. It's not necessarily connected to what's going on during that, even though it does take place in the same universe because the Birds of Prey movie involves characters from the first Suicide Squad film and the first Suicide Squad film is kind of connected to the second Suicide Squad film. It's a very loose continuity. We have a look of her on set. She's walking around in the red dress from the comics. So just an alternate look from Harley Quinn that what you saw during Birds of Prey and during that first Suicide Squad film. And even though Jared Leto's Joker still exists within this version of the DC universe, he does not appear during this movie. It's not like he's coming back because obviously he's off in the Marvel Sony Spider-Man universe doing the Morbius movie right now. But he did say that there's no version of the Joker that appears during this movie. It's just Harley Quinn. So she might reference stuff that happened with the Joker in the events of the previous film, but he's not going to appear on screen as far as we know. There's been a lot of talk about a new version of the Joker appearing during Matt Reeves' Batman trilogy with Robert Pattinson, but that would be a completely different version of the character and he'd have to recast him. And there is no Joker that's supposed to appear on screen during the first new Batman movie. But obviously you see that Rick Flagg is back from the first movie. You also see that Captain Boomerang is back from the first movie, just confirming that they aren't completely wiping the slate clean with that first Suicide Squad film. I know because of the big Justice League Snyder Cut movement and the fact we're getting that movie next year, people are starting to turn to David Ayer and wondering if he's ever going to do an Ayer cut of the Suicide Squad movie. But because they have this new James Gunn version of a Suicide Squad movie coming out, I don't think they're going to do anything with David Ayer's Suicide Squad cut. You finally see Idris Elba show up. Most people believe that he's Bronze Tiger. Idris Elba was going to be Will Smith's replacement in the movie. Initially, they talked about recasting him as a new version of Deadshot, but then just because they didn't want to step on Will Smith's toes too much and piss off too many of the fans, they just decided to turn Idris Elba into a completely different character. There was a whole lot of Bronze Tiger on the Arrow TV show during season two. And fun Easter egg here for the Batman franchise, at least the Dark Knight, Christopher Nolan Batman franchise. But the Bronze Tiger of that TV show was actually played by Michael Jai White, who was also one of the gangsters during The Dark Knight. So just fun connection between all the big DC movies, especially big Batman movies in the TV shows. 
Obviously, we have to talk about John Cena's character. We finally see him show up in a Suicide Squad promo, but he's playing Peacemaker. Peacemaker is just a really, really hardcore Punisher level character in the DC universe. The joke about his character is that he loves peace so much he'd kill for it. You don't see him till a little bit later in this promo, but this is Steve Agee. He's supposed to be playing a version of King Shark, so there will be a couple of big motion capture characters in the movie, like they did Killer Croc during the first Suicide Squad film. The closest we've ever come to live action King Shark so far is actually through the Flash TV show they've been using in the past couple of seasons. Taika Waititi is also supposed to be in the movie, even though he's not in this promo, but because he does so much Korg and motion capture in the Marvel Universe, I'm also expecting him to be another motion capture character during the Suicide Squad film. You recognize this woman as Alice Braga from the New Mutants movie. She plays Celia Reyes, an X-Men character, so it is funny to see an X-Men character from the MCU show up in a DC movie so soon, if we ever get to see that movie. There were a lot of people last week that thought that she might be playing a version of Poison Ivy secretly in the DCEU because we've never seen a version of Poison Ivy in any of the newer movies. James Gunn debunked that, so it's possible that Poison Ivy doesn't show up until the new Matt Reeves Batman movies because she is a bigger Batman villain. Alice Braga could be playing a version of Black Orchid, but it's still open to theory crafting. Black Orchid is a Justice League dark character who's kind of a plant-based hybrid, kind of like Poison Ivy. Discount Poison Ivy, basically. You all probably recognize Pete Davidson's character. He's playing Savant, just a relatively minor Suicide Squad character that gets killed off pretty quickly during the New 52. I don't know how big he's going to be during this movie. This is Mei Ling Ying. She's actually playing the female Mon Gal, Mongol's daughter, even though she's not in costume here. You see what she kind of looks like with her makeup on in these set photos. Nathan Fillion's character is still a bit of a mystery. A lot of people think that he's Blackguard from the comics, relatively minor character. It really doesn't matter so much who he's playing. It's going to be a super obscure, super weird character from the looks of his costume. But Nathan Fillion is always fantastic in whatever he does. So I'm just really excited to see him actually show up on screen in a James Gunn movie. He's had a couple cameos during the Guardians of the Galaxy Marvel movies, but the first one was a motion capture alien, so you didn't get to see his face. And his secret cameo during Guardians of the Galaxy 2 wound up getting cut for time, so he didn't make it into that version of the movie. You all probably recognize David Doshmalian from the Marvel Universe. He's in all the Ant-Man movies. He's playing Polka Dot Man, obviously super obscure, super weird character. It'd be like Condiment King from the Batman comics showing up in a DC movie. You probably recognize Storm Reid. She's playing a version of Idris Elba's daughter in the movie. You all recognize James Gunn's brother, Sean Gunn, who shows up in all of his movies, often as motion capture characters. He's playing a version of Weasel from the comics. Then this girl is Daniela Melchior. She's playing a version of Rat Catcher, just another hardcore, really obscure, super weird character. If you don't recognize this guy, this is Flew LeBorg. He's a comedy YouTuber who's actually started to do movies the last couple of years. He's playing a character called Javelin from the comics. You see what his costume looks like. It is suitably ridiculous. That's why he's acting so ridiculous during this. He mostly plays characters that are just really, really comedic and over the top. Michael Rooker, obviously, very big during that first look teaser of the cast. We don't know who he's playing either. Longtime James Gunn collaborator, typically plays really hardcore characters, so I would just expect something in that tone. But the way James Gunn talks about it, he's going to be dropping at least some sort of teaser at DC fandom. The way that James Gunn has talked about it in the past is that they're kind of treating it like a funny tongue-in-cheek joke about the whole nature of the Suicide Squad comics and Task Force X. The whole concept that the team itself is expendable, Amanda Waller does not give a crap about any of them. I'm hoping James Gunn really reaches for that joke and in the first 10 minutes of the film he winds up introducing a crazy version of the team that he then kills off. Then they form the actual version of the team that you see for most of the movie. The whole thing with that Superman teaser this morning that Rocksteady posted on their account is for the brand new Suicide Squad Arkham style game that they're making. The reason why the Suicide Squad target is painted on Superman's head is because there are a lot of rumors that it's actually a Suicide Squad versus the Justice League game. Like in the game, you are the Suicide Squad and you're supposed to take down the Justice League. There'll be at least a couple movie trailers and teasers. I don't know how many they're going to be releasing, but I'll try to do videos for everything. So as long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you should see all those videos when I post them. While you wait for all that stuff, click here for that brand new Wonder Woman 1984 trailer and click here for that brand new Boys Season 2 trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.